Hey, hello guys. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, you are welcome. Please get to know us even as we get to know you. And uh, how is your day? How is your morning? It's a morning. It's a morning. Um, those that are returning, welcome back. I always thank those that have always come back to watch my videos. And I always say thank you, thank you for finding time to even come and watch my videos. Because... Uh, I know there are many channels, but you have chosen to come and watch this one. I just want to appreciate you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you for always coming back. Wow. <laughs> if you are clicking for the first time and you are wondering who are these, this is Never Age TV. This is a channel that um, a positive reaction part, part channel. We react very positively about issues, and this particular day, we are telling stories. Af of Africa, stories of Africa, stories of Africa, and uh, as you know, uh, this particular season I'm dwelling in Nyabuhanse, or I'm um, actually focusing on Nyabuhanse so much. This is because our king, the traveling commando, I am Marwa, has come back to Africa. He is in Nyabuhanse. Nyabuhanse is a village in Africa where I am Marwa was born and uh, raised and uh, I am an African, I am a Kenyan, Marwa is a Kenyan and uh, I am Marwa is the guy who has uh, shown us a lot of travels and um, he started his YouTube channel uh, in Colombia, uh, he didn't start it here in Kenya but he has uh, influenced and multi motivated so many Young boys in Nyabuhanze, the village where he was born. Most of them opening uh, YouTube channels that have become of great help to them. And um, they have benefited from them. And that is why I'm saying today it is stories from Africa. Because this is a story. This is a story to be told. This is a story to be told. A story from Africa. And guys, <laughs> hey, let me tell you guys. Most of the times when we are blessed, we think of ourselves and our, our, our situations and we don't care about that other person who is our neighbor out there who doesn't have that thing that we have. And we say, hey, I come first. Myself and my family, we come first. And we don't think of that neighbor who doesn't have a thing. We don't think of that other one who doesn't, who has not even had a meal. And especially when it is in the village where... Um, People are very keen on uh, looking at families that are, are, are doing well. You'll find that, that a family that is doing poorly is disregarded and, uh, and uh, discarded, if I should say. People don't want us to associate with them. I, why I'm telling you this is because of Ayam Marwa. Ayam Marwa was born in a very humble family in Nyabuhanse. And... Uh, he was brought up without shoes until the age of 11 years. That is when he wore his first pair of shoes. And uh, you can imagine a child that has gone to school even without shoes. Because at 11 years, you are already in school. Actually, you, are, you, are, you, have, been, you have stayed in school for about five, five or so years. Because children start uh, schooling at six years. Sometimes at five, but at six. At 11 years, you still have never worn a shoe. Can you imagine a small child, a small child with his tender uh, feet walking to school without shoes? Have you ever thought and imagined that? Because even as I do this video, I'm just imagining how a small child's uh, feet are tender, very tender and soft. But this boy is waking up to go to school without shoes. Can you imagine how cold that boy was feeling in the feet? Huh? Especially in the months of July in Kenya, when we, we, we have uh, the coldest uh, I mean, temperatures. And this child is waking up at 6 in the morning to go to school barefoot. 6 in the morning. 7 in the morning, walking on stones, walking on soil, without shoes. And that is what happened to Marwa. When I look at the Nairobi kids, and I'm in Nairobi, guys, and I see how kids in Nairobi, how we take care of them. We don't want to, them to feel cold. We clothe them so well. We make sure that they have worn shoes and with socks when going to school. And I imagine that village child who walked without shoes 
at the age of six to school up to the age of 11. This is a guy that was brought up in a very humble situation and um, may God just bless this young man because when he, is, uh, he, he grew up, he started thinking of the poor and that is why you see he's doing whatever he's doing and I'll come back to that, I'll come to that, um, to the less uh, fortunate. So guys, I'm telling this story to, to highlight that many families in the villages go without shoes, go without food, and there's nobody who cares about that. Actually, who would care? Because this is a situation that happens everywhere. Actually, there's nobody who cares about, about a person who doesn't have anything. So Mara was brought up in a very humble family, and we have always known Kograt's mom, the mother, as a teacher. I don't know if she still was a teacher then. I'm sure if she was a teacher, she must have been a junior teacher. So the salaries may not have been very good. And I don't know where the father was. But Mara has always told us that he, he grew up in, in poverty. On growing up, went to school and uh, 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 completed. I, he must have gone to the university and completed. And at one point... Also went to the university, and I'm sure he also completed. You can imagine how much these uh, poor parents may be sacrificed to educate this child to these levels. And uh, we appreciate and we know the efforts that the parents take towards educating their children. It's amazing. And it's, uh, may God bless these parents, because most of us were brought up like Marwa. We stayed without shoes also for many, many years born in the villages also like i was born in the village and i went without shoes also for so many years in fact marwa remembers that he went without shoes up to 11 years i don't remember if, even at 11 if i was wearing shoes let me remember because at 11 was i having i remember one time we were bought shoes by our mom plastic shoes that we used to call sadak sadak and we wore them to church one sunday and it was very hot Oh my God, my sisters and I, we, when, when the sun um, burnt our feet in those plastic shoes, they burnt our legs. <laughs> they burnt our feet because we did not have socks and the shoes are plastic. And I remember removing those shoes and carrying them all home with my hands because of the way they were burning me. Burning me because they were plastic. Anyway, we were bought shoes when we were big girls and boys in the village and... Um, I also came from a very humble family where we could even we could not even afford the shoes, leave alone the the, the 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 nice clothes we could not. I remember we used to have only one outfit for Sunday. <laughs> and we could call it Guayakumia and in, in my mother tongue it is that outfit for Sunday. The outfit for Sunday. That's how we used to call that outfit. And we could not wear it to, to any any place. We knew that this outfit has to be worn only on Sunday. And you can imagine what kind of an outfit it was, but it was our best. As for shoes, I remember I performed well and I went to a, to a secondary school. I think that is the time now my parents had to be forced to buy me shoes because we, we could not be admitted in high school without shoes. So in uh, during the primary uh, um Yes, we ran to school without shoes. We went to those toilets in school, ratrins, ratrins, without shoes. And you know how the pupils used to urinate on top of the, 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 <laughs> the toilet. I mean, the, the, you know, the, the urine was all over because of the, the population in school. And we could be asked by our teachers to carry ash from home. You know, when you burn firewood, or when you cook with firewood, there is that ash that comes out of firewood. And that ash is the one that you used to tell our mothers to, 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 to give us. And we carry that ash to school. And then we could go and pour it in the ratrins, school ratrins. And then all pupils used to enter those ratrins without shoes. Oh my God, that we did not even get sick on our feet. And we could, you could sometimes go to that ratrin and fight. People have, pupils have urinated everywhere and we could still enter there. <laughs> so I'm thinking of Marwa as coming, uh, having uh, worn shoes because he said it here at the age of 11. And I'm saying it is not only Marwa. It is not only Marwa. Even us, we stayed 
long without wearing a pair of shoes and uh, we grew up to a certain uh, level uh, up to a certain number of years and until the time we were joining form one then from form one then after that we, we could uh, obviously we, we've never stopped wearing shoes because it was mandatory in school until the time we finished school and then we, we stepped out into the world and started living now as for marwa on finishing and going to Colombia in some ways, he ended up in Colombia. He has told us the story of how he lost his job and how he, he somebody introduced a newspaper cutting that uh, wanted people uh, to go to as volunteers to Colombia. And he sold everything and went. At one time, he was even homeless in Colombia. And he had bought a camera. I don't know at what point Marwa had bought a camera because he didn't even know he would start a YouTube channel. But at one point he had a camera and had nothing else in Colombia and he was homeless. And people are telling him, why don't you sell the camera and, 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 and uh, get accommodation or get food? But he refused to sell his camera and he started shooting videos with that camera. And uh, that is how he started YouTube with so many problems, but he did. But you see, it was never as smel smooth sailing. Still, he had issues while starting. It is not something that he was given on a silver platter that take this YouTube channel, this is how you do it, and this is how it pays. He had to struggle to go through this and that in order to, to start his channel. But what I wanted to tell you, uh, stories from Africa, is that Marwa, on building himself up in Colom Colombia and other countries, at one time they refused to renew his visa in Colombia, and he had to, instead of coming back to Africa, he sought to go to other countries uh, where he would uh, stay or, or maybe get a visa or renew or visa free countries like Jamaica. I don't know where he went, but he, he at least went to another country before he to other countries before he came back to Africa. And he stayed long before coming back to Africa. Many, many years, I think more than three years. Anyway, on coming back, he had already now uh, built himself up in the YouTube world and he had uh, started benefiting, he had started benefiting from YouTube because he was already monetized and now he was, you see, earning from YouTube. But you see, you have gone through so much pain and through so much and still when you come to Africa, you still want to help people, you still want to help people and that is Marwa. When he came back to Africa, he started building his villa and I don't know whether he started immediately or he started building his mother's house. I hear the mother, the parents had started building a house and it was not complete, but he helped complete. He said himself that he helped complete the mansion that we see the parents live in. He helped build that uh, mansion to completion. So he later now started uh, moving out and coming back, going to countries and coming back until now he started building his villa. And now from there, people started coming for help and Mar Marwa started uh, teaching people how to go about uh, creating YouTube videos. And it, for those people that do not know who Marwa is, this is Marwa. This is Marwa, guys. This is Marwa. For those that do not know who Marwa is, that is Marwa with Nasto. That is Marwa. And I, I, th I don't know whether they are, they are supervising something. Let's oh see. Not even when I think it's, I don't think it's on a Tuesday or Wednesday, I should, I should be busy. <laughs> yeah, yes. uh, the idea is the first week is more of arrivals. Yes. Okay, arrival and people putting their tents somewhere. But the second week now, the party begins. For December. No, no, that's the first week, 18th. Add seven days, that is 25th. up to 25th. Yeah. So from 25th, now, officially now we begin the party. Yes. It runs for... Uh, Approximately two weeks. He's talking so about the party that is coming up. Maybe. Just anyone? No, we have to have uh, people at least register online. Uh -huh. Yes, we have. There'll be a portal. Yes, we are creating a portal. I think it's already it's already there, but I need to uh, put it out there. So there'll be a portal, and also you have to come with your ID. Uh -huh. We will take at least a picture of you. I don't know if a picture is important, but at least we need uh, that. the ID. The ID. He's yeah. talking about yeah. his, his, his yeah, invite to the wanna, we party. We don't want to welcome even like people we actually don't know who they are. So it's good we have some information because also we don't want chaos. We want, we want everybody to be happy, everybody to celebrate, everybody to enjoy. We put some music, you know, things like that. Yeah. 
So yeah, and we eat something good, you know, some foods. Yeah, I'm thinking actually from next week we shall start our small garden here yes. for vegetables. Okay, vegetables. Yes. Yeah. I was with one guy here, I don't know his name. I don't know who the farmer. Oh, Farmer Isa. Farmer Isa. Yes. So Farmer Isa suggested this place we should put some vegetables for it's the party. place because I can see we have waterways here all the way. Yeah. Everywhere. Your land is actually blessed. You know up there, yeah. I've tried so much to get at least water, yeah. <laughs> but it's a big problem. But you, you know, have seen here just... I was, I was buying in the river. Yes. People thought I'm the crazy guy. Yeah. But I know any big city in the world is built along the river. You can see guys, here we have yeah. water everywhere. Flowing. Everywhere. Flowing. Yes. Everywhere. Every big city in the world. Yes. Or any major like like project where people live, it's based around water. Yes. Even Dubai, it has an ocean nearby. Water is very essential, or it was very essential in growing like big cities. Yeah. Yes. So we are preparing. Yes. We are preparing, but like, right now I'm saving all the money I have. Not really all old, but at most 80%. 80%. I'm pumping it to buying the tiles. Yeah. So by maybe next week. End of next week, by God's grace, we should we should be done at least paying for the first slot of the tiles, which is the big pack. Yes. So once we have that, we shall have another one week and a half because the the guy who works on the tiles has promised me if he's given he's given one week and a half, we'll be done. So I'm thinking early October, like the first week of October, at the end of it, we should have the entire house tied. Tied. Wow. So yes. guys, you can hear, that is the update of the party. Are you coming? Yeah, I, I actually asked them earlier yeah. if they are ready to yeah, come to the village. Are, yeah. yes. <laughs> very soon we are putting that uh, portal. Yes. So any video that we shall be making about talking about the party, we shall be putting the link so that people can, uh, you know, like, uh, put the information right there. So at least we know how many people are coming. Yes. You see already we have a wall here. Yeah. I think for me this wall so far is okay. It's not going higher than this. So the plan is, from here, we should have an electric fence going on. Ah. You know, an electric fence. Yes, so the river. The river yeah. is just there. Uh, that's the river right there. Yes. And I'm thinking, even if anybody is jumping into this fence, like on this other side, this is somebody with different agendas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because already, clearly, you can see there is a fence. Yeah, fence, fence, for sure. So, yeah. But I don't know how it will be, but you know me, I'm so ready, I'm like, no matter the state of the house yes. or where we shall be, no matter the type of state, we're gonna have a party. For sure, for sure. So if you guys come and I am in the middle of I don't know doing something that we really need, that would be like they that. feel at home. Yes, but at least I'm asking people to carry their tents and to carry their what did I say the other one? IDs. No, air mattress. Or the air mattress. Yes. So that if people come here five thousand, where will they sleep? Also, sure. oh, there's no like maximum number, or the portal will have like maybe we shall see when you get five hundred. But I, I, close it. I think when we even five hundred people, when we reach there, we can close it. I think that one will be much better because yeah. it will control. You know, maybe you can yeah. have here like ten. But again, hours. I'm giving priorities first for the people from outside more than the villagers. Yeah. Because the villager, his home is right there. <laughs> we access here every day. Yes, you can come, ch uh, chill here. Yes, in at the, the end of the day. At the end of the day, then you leave. For sure. So actually, I'm trying to see if we can have 500 yeah. foreigners. Yeah. We'll close the portal. For sure, for sure. But uh, for people from around here, even around Kenya, but not so far, those ones, uh, I think they can find accommodation. Around. Because I don't want somebody, my neighbor, like living in his home and just chilling and, uh, there in the tent. Feeling the, the phone. No, no, no. no. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And I'm not again because it's, it's their home. Yeah, so sure, they should even sure. help me accommodate someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We will, definitely. We will. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so, so guys, this is uh, Ayamaro, yes. the guy uh, that really inspired most of us to start YouTube, uh, YouTube channels. Yes. And I'm so grateful. So you hear, guys, this is the Marwa that inspired every young man in Nyabuhanse to start a YouTube channel. And I'm, I'm talking about stories in Africa because I don't know how many people can inspire or how many can even help or even give an idea on how to do the thing that you, them, they themselves do. Most of the times we do our businesses in the cities and we are like, 
we don't want to inform somebody out there what we do because we don't want them to know. And we feel like this is our catch and we don't want to share it with someone. But you see, Marwa has shared this with every other person in Yabuhanze. YouTubers have, have uh, started YouTube channels. They are very young boys. They have bought, bought their own land. They have started building. It's Nasto, the guy he is with, just bought that land. And he's now preparing to start building. In fact, Marwa was advising him yesterday on how he should start building his main house. And the boy was suggesting uh, Nasto. I'm calling him a boy. He was suggesting that he can just start a small building first because he doesn't have much. And Mara was telling him, okay, don't do a small house. Do a big house because you have big dreams. And uh, he is even willing to give people, young people advice and even assist them with ideas. Have you ever known that not many people want you to grow big like them? But you hear Mara doesn't even have the, the, the heart to, to refuse or, or to... to, 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 to he doesn't have space for impossibilities. He tells the guy, you are a big dreamer. Dream big. So start a big house. Many people will tell you, oh, okay, just start a small house because you know life is very hard. If you start a big house, I don't know how you're going to complete it. And somebody will not even want you to build a big house like them. But Mara tells him, no, 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 no. Don't do two constructions. Do one construction. Maybe you can complete in bits and make sure that your mom comes and, comes and stays with you. That is where if you want your mom's space. And also don't um build a small house because you are a big dreamer and you're going to get big and when you get big and you already occupied your space with a small house how are you gonna build yourself a big house thereafter so marwa advises these young men accordingly he assists them with ideas he gives them shout outs he helps them grow oh my god let me tell you marwa is one of a kind Marwa is one of a kind. And I want to tell you something. That I have not seen two people like Marwa. Most of us, especially Kenyans, we don't tell out our secrets on how we survive. We keep it close to our hearts because we don't want other people to know what we do. And we just want to be known that, yes, so-and-so's son, so-and-so's daughter. Hey, we don't know what he does. Oh, he's doing so well, but we don't know where he gets his money. But you see, Marwa is showing these guys how to fish, how to catch fish for themselves. And um, he's encouraging them and giving them ideas and even assisting them in whatever he can. So uh, everybody in the village li likes Marwa, but I don't want to say that it is everybody because everywhere you have somebody who is uh, negative in some way and uh, thinking of you negatively, uh, uh, that is obvious and that is normal. But we want to say that we have seen uh, very a very good uh, man in Marwa, a very good-hearted person. Who has, who has a heart to assist and to, to help. So the, his party is coming up as you heard him speak. It is coming up in November, November 18th, and he said very well that you are welcome. He's gonna create a portal and people are going to book in. And um, at a certain number, when he gets, it gets to a certain uh, number of people, he's gonna close it because actually you cannot, uh, you can only hold wh 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 what you, you I mean, uh, you can only contain what you can hold uh, if there is English like that. So there is um, that space th that he sees, like if there are 100 people or so, 500 people or so, he's going to close the portal. So book early for your coming and come with an air mattress and uh, a tent because obviously you don't expect him to house 5,000 people in his main house. So you can come in with an air mattress, it's something you can buy and fold, it's very foldable, very tiny, and then you can come with it. Also, for the neighbors, please give the international visitors space, let them have their space in the house, so that when they come in, they'll, uh, they'll have the space first. Don't go there occupying the space and eating the food and all that. When guests from uh, um, international guests are lacking space, Give them space because Marwa, as he says, Marwa, as Marwa says, you may be a neighbor there, but because you you were invited, you want to be there every day eating food and even space, occupying space. No, 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 no. Give space to the international guests first, and then after that you can always come in. And it's not that he's hating the the neighbors or you know despising them, but he's saying the international guests come first. So you who are coming from out there. You know, the party is on November 18th, and it coincided with Marwa's birthday, which is November 15th. He pushed it that, uh, that, and, uh, 
and he also was celebrating something else. He was also celebrating something else. He said it's going to be a party in celebration to those two. His house opening and all that. So it's going to be housewarming and his birthday and all that. So please give Mara a company and also come with an air mattress. Those that are able to send contributions or donations to Marwa, he said there is nothing wrong with asking for a donation because even presidents like uh, President Obama or even uh, uh, President, uh, you know, the presidents, they also, during their campaign seasons, they also ask for donations. They are friends to support them, yet they are presidents. They have everything. But when you hear your friend has got an error or a project, you can support that person even when he's able because this is your person and this is your friend. So Marwa is not ashamed to ask for donations. If you feel like you can donate towards the party, you are welcome. You are welcome to donate. Please send your contributions to Marwa. You know his PayPal number and you know all that the details that are, uh, you require, you can inquire. And also, Support so that this party becomes a success. Do not feel like, oh, Marwa has invited us for a party. It is him who should provide. It is only us, the Africans, who have got that mentality. You know, should know that because you don't uh, help. You don't donate because the people you are donating to don't have. Sometimes you donate to a very able person in order to boost him uh, with his uh, project at that particular time. So let us donate. Let those that are coming donate to one's Marwa's uh, party so that people can enjoy fully. 30 days is not a short period of time. People will be eating and sleeping. And he said that he's going to bring the cows and the goats and all that. The vegetables have to be planted in the compound. So it's not a joke, guys. It's A whole month is not a joke when you have more than a thousand people coming to eat and sleep in your place. Marwa has done something that has never been done by other people. And we have to, to encourage him and congratulate him at the same time because this is a good example that he's, he's uh, teaching to us uh, that it is possible. So it is possible, it is possible for people after their hard earned cash, after working very, very hard, it's possible for them to sit for one month to eat and dine and sleep. And that is very good. Call friends so that you come and celebrate with them. What are friends for? Friends are there to celebrate with. So invite them. That is what Marwa is doing, and we, we, we can't wait for this party. I want to know more about yesterday, Minhawi. Minhawi, my girl, hi! <laughs> How are you today, Minhawi? So Minhawi was telling us that uh, with her, she has already um, uh, contributed water, drinking water, so many packs. That is what she's bringing to the party. So what are you bringing to the party? Also come to the party with something as a donation. Uh, this is our party, so don't come standing up uh, empty-hearted. Come with something so that we enjoy this party. All of us. <laughs> yes, all of us. We love Marwa and we love the Congrats Mom. We love the family. We love Dimwango. We love everybody in that family, even the Congrats Dad. We call him Congrats Dad and he has never opened a channel and called it Congrats Dad. But we, we, call, it, we call him Congrats Dad because we love that family. That's a very unique family. A family that... A family that is very unique, very good-hearted people. So people, are you welcome to Kenya? I'm welcoming you to Kenya, Marwa's home. And I've not even met Marwa in person, but I know I'm going to meet Marwa one of these days. And um, I, I'm, I'm going to look for an invite so that I go to Nyabuhanse and meet him. But you are welcome to Kenya, you are welcome to Nyabuhanse. We have all been invited. We are going to be given the details about the party. And these are stories from Africa, that even in Africa we can do something. That is going to be international. <laughs> Mara has started showing us the way. Stories from Africa. You may have walked barefooted, but that will not restrict you or stop you from becoming who you are. Mara walked barefoot. But today, he has built that villa that you saw, guys. You know? He has built it. Something that you saw and you are surprised. That is what he has done. So you walk barefoot, but still that does not limit you from becoming who you are or who you want to become. So Marwa is a good example to us all and we want to learn from him. We want to learn from him. So guys, please subscribe to this channel. It's because I've been crazily busy. Even right now, the pressure is going low. Yeah. Actually, it's going low and low and low and low. I think in the next like 
five days from now, uh, I'll be done with like anything will be like more containable. You know, when you arrive, everybody wants everybody to check. Yes, that's Marwa. Please subscribe. <laughs>